Hello. We go that way. Come on. All right, look at this. Japanese knotweed. It's taking over the place. It's a real pest. Trees everywhere. You can see it here. You can recognise it. It looks like a little bit like um, a little bit like rhubarb, isn't it? Um, but yeah, you can see it. It's all supposed to be taken care of. But that's not why I'm here at Will Busy. That's why I'm here at Will Busy. There's a stack. Now, what that stack is, um, is an important part of mining heritage down here. Um, being left to fall to pieces and rot and ruin. Uh, you'll see this place in a second, just as we come around this corner. Um, behind all these bushes here, there's a load of tunnels. All collapsed in now. But what that is, is that's the, f that's the chimney flue to an arsenic house signer. Now when they used to dig all of the ore out of the ground and haul it up, they sent it through stamps, which are big, heavy, like hammocks really, and they were based just there. There's the ruins of them. And they would put the ore in the top and it would get smashed and mixed with water. Um, and then it would uh, flow down and go through various different treatment processes to get crap out and get it smaller and smoother until it was a slimy paste and they'd then they need to get the arsenic out of it because of course when you often when you bring tin up from the ground it's uh, it has an impurity of arsenic now it was a, it was a pain in the ass really they didn't they didn't want it in there it buggered up smelting and it nobody wanted arsenic for a long time so they used to throw it on open fires and a big plume of smoke used to burn off the arsenic um, until about 200 years ago a chap called Brunton invented the Brunton calciner um, and here's one of them here now what the Brunton calciner did was it was basically a big square house um, and it was a continuous furnace for roasting um, for roasting um, tin ore and getting the arsenic off. Now, as this was, this is probably about 150, 170 years old, it's in ruin at the moment, um, but I can still show you how it works and a few little surprises. But um, what it essentially was, was, um, as I say, a square building, it was a big furnace really. And uh, it had two fire pits, and it used to have a rotating hearth. Great big, or hearth, however you say it. A great big old um, rotating disc inside. Now, here you go, you can see that there, look. Just in that middle there, you can see there's the rotating hearth. Now. On top of that, all the arsenic ore and the cysticerite and everything would, would, would sit on top of it. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how it works. It's quite hard to get some information on it. But I think that these two here, this one here and this one here, were the fireboxes. And they used to continuously shove coal in there. And I think that that middle bit was how they got the got the ore, uh, the, the, the roasted ore out. I do believe that... Um, the the hearth was loaded up um, from the top somehow. I don't think you can see the mechanism with how that that works. Um, so what we were doing then essentially is, you know, we were. This looks pretty much like a a fire pin. Looks like it had a door on it, and there'd have been a big old fire in there, and the heat and fumes would have gone up across that and the fire would have lashed across this which would have been rotating it didn't go very fast I think it went around about once an hour or something like that you can find that out on the internet but it would all sit on there it all get roasted um, more fire in there and what would happen around the back um, well here's the uh, rotating mechanism here just there I don't quite know how that uh, 
how that one would work. But because of the heat involved, they used to put these great big metal um, straps on to hold the building together really because it was so hot. Morning. Morning. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, here we are. This is the exit flue. You can tell it's the exit flue. Um, certainly wasn't where the fire went. And this one would have come down here and gone over this. So there were two flues coming out. There's another one behind that, exactly identical to that. And that one would have come down and gone under here. And everything would have come down here, gone across here and over into that section. So what's um, important to note is all of this stuff on the sides. Oh, this is come out of there. All of this grey stuff is arsenic trioxide. It's all up there, look. It's all arsenic crystals. What's actually happened is this has literally been shut down and left to ruin. And they haven't cleaned it out. So that is arsenic trioxide. You can see it forming there. Very pure as well. well I've got some more to show you, really. So, right, here we go. So this is the beginning of the labyrinth here. So it would have come across here and it's sort of split into those sections here. And I think this is a bit of a different way of getting the arsenic out before it goes into a labyrinth where most of the arsenic condensed so it's quite easy to uh, to extract. So as you can see in here, let's go and have a proper proper look in here. Look, there we go, look, arsenic. You see it there? All there. Forms like cauliflower florets. But that's arsenic trioxide. This stuff is deadly. I'll show you how deadly, well, I won't show you, I'll tell you how deadly in a minute. But what we're going to go around here, this is rabbit hunting season, isn't it, Days? So what we're going to do is go up here, uh, underneath it now, but this is part of the labyrinth. And it looks like Yep, arsenic here. And it's just everywhere really. You can see little bits of it here. This isn't the main labyrinth though. Here we go, look, here's a good here's a good example. Look, look just out in the open. <laughs> Lots of it. Arsenic trioxide. So you can see it all on the wall down here, look. But that's not the best bit. So you can see here is a flu. All collapsed in there. And there's another tunnel there. And then we went into the labyrinth. And here is the start of the labyrinth. So, whatever it was that building was for, probably a big easy condenser to go in, had a door in it, all the smoke and arsenic would come through. Because what happens is when you get to about 700 degrees, the, basically the, the arsenic roasts off, it goes into a smoke, and then you send it into the labyrinth, into the smaller, cooler, buildings and essentially it, it touches the cold walls and it condenses just like just like water vapor on a mirror in the morning so you've got the hot vapor coming out and it condenses on the wall so then it comes down here obviously it, um, what has, hasn't condensed 
condenses further down and it gets a point where you get the machine going for so long that those buildings become so hot that it won't condense on them so what happens is it goes further down so they would obviously keep an eye on where the arsenic is condensing and here we come up to a funky little bit you can see this wall here so there would have been a wall here and it would have gone down here you go you can see it gone down gone across and then so it would hit this 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 wall here from from the long straight and then it will turn around it would hit that and it would go around and it would go around as you can see it's a it's a proper labyrinth and then it would do this for a bit and then go up up towards the, towards the stack and go out the chimney now of course not everything not everything um condensed in the chimney so you were pumping arsenic trioxide into the air so you wouldn't want to be living around one of these stacks um, the stacks with the uh, the black top kind of signify that it's an arsenic calciner we've got one there and we've got another one over there as you can see uh, but there's quite a few of them around now here we go look still got arsenic condensed on the walls over there look been there for hundreds of years not doing anyone any harm um, this section is obviously really heavy with arsenic here as you can see reason being the velocity everything would have come down here really quick this would have hit this and create a big old build up of arsenic here and it would have permeated into the stone and into the uh, into the um, into the mortar in between because of course the rock is porous um, and it will eventually absorb everything so it's gone in there over the years and um, and over the years after after it's all been exposed to the elements the water's gone into it and it's caused it to lich out so yes lots of lots of arsenic don't feed that in right now I'm going to show you a little quirk of the of what's happened now obviously we're going back here to the calciner this is uh this is where it all really happened this is where the heaviest concentrations were now what did they use arsenic for well at first nothing it was thrown away it was it was a pain in the ass they used to get rid of it nobody wanted it but then all of a sudden somebody developed the first pesticide using arsenic and there was uh, um, lots of bugs over in America especially that was destroying the crops so they had need for arsenic so all of a sudden arsenic became a big commodity um, over here in Cornwall they were just taking it out throwing it away so so that added to the prosperity of, of Cornwall helped it with the industrial revolution um, help the county move forward now under here I should have bought my torch but I didn't it's back in the van now as you can imagine this building with no roof on it it's been sitting here for a long long time it's uh, it's been soaking with with water and of course it had a it had the hearth full of probably actually full of cassiterite and uh, be interesting to have a look actually one day with a mask on of course but it's probably full of cassiterite and, and other stuff and of course the same things happened all of the hot fumes have condensed and, and the stones absorbed all of the um all of the arsenic so uh over the years it's got damp and soaking wet and the arsenic's dissolved into the water and it's gone to the lowest point and where it's gone to the lowest point it's uh left little drips and it's formed stalactites or stalagmites whichever one they are I forget um, and then of course once that water's dissolved it leaves behind its mineral which happens to be a crystal of arsenic and here look at this look at this underneath is absolutely covered in arsenic trioxide and it's absolutely beautiful but absolutely deadly so what I'm going to do here I'm going to just change I'm going to just change the white balance for you so that I can see no, not that one 
we go. That's a little bit more true to what my eye is seeing. Now, what we've got here, look, is it's literally, it's literally like an inch thick here with all these little beautiful little crystals. It's an absolutely beautiful thing to see. And it changes colour as some of the minerals that are in the rock above or actually in the bricks or actually in the rock building. Um, it's absorbed, a bit like food colouring really, it's absorbed those minerals as well, added with the, with the, um, with the arsenic and it's formed a coloured trioxide. Sometimes when the oxide forms with another mineral, as in green, um, it forms Paris green, which is uh, an arsenic and copper mineral, which is used in fireworks to get wonderful blue colours. Um, it's about one of the few uses. Now, as you can see, look at this blue. It's absolutely beautiful. And here we are, we have like a little section here where nothing seems to be growing except these cauliflower type things. As you can see, it's amazing, isn't it? I'm gonna see if I can uh, get shed some light on this from my phone. Hold on one second. So you can see it. Look at that. There we go, look at that. That's the, it's leaching out of the uh, mortar in between. In between. But look at this colors. It almost looks like a coral reef under the sea. But this is absolutely deadly. And this would be what would be on the inside of the wall. Not quite as pure as this, because this, is, this has come through um, being dissolved in water and then actually recrystallization. <laughs> so this is actually much purer. But look at this, look at these beautiful colors, look. That's not true. Let me change the white balance back again because I've got my light. Where are you? That what looks best. There we go, that looks best. Or does it? No, that is best actually. So, look at that. You can't really see what I'm seeing with my eyes, I don't think. But it is absolutely beautiful. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. Arsenic trioxide. Um, it's the purest form. It's metal, but it's dissolved into a crystal. Um, it's been transformed into a crystal. So the metal of arsenic is actually in there. Look at this dirty stuff, look. This looks dirty. And then we've got some strange yellowy formation on this uh, rotating mechanism. Do you know what? I don't even know how they rotated this. I haven't got a clue. I suspect it was probably with a horse. It could have even been by a man because it wasn't going very fast. Look at this, isn't it amazing? And look at this, down here, look. Anyway, so, what we're gonna do now is, uh, touch a little bit of it. Now I'm not going to eat anything or do anything, I'm going to wash my hands straight after, but it's, it's very crumbly. Break these spikes off. It's interesting actually, if you, if you come down here on a wet day when the air is moist, this stuff is very fluffy and it just falls off. This stuff probably, yeah, oh, look at it. Try and get one of these floric things. Where's a good one? Where's it? Oh dear. I just bumped my head into the arsenic. There we go. Right, let's get outside. So here we've got three different bits from underneath. Look at that. Flowery. Puff. And 
And then we've got this crystalline, which was that dirty stuff, and then we've got that wonderful blue. Isn't that amazing? I'm going to zoom in so you can get a look. Let's see if I can get some distance. There we go. Now, I would say, right, <clears throat> that here in my hand, we've probably got about two grams, about two grams of arsenic. Different, different types. Well, not different types, but look at it. It's amazing, isn't it? Anyway, so we've got about two grams. Now, here we go, lethal dose. The LD50, which is the lethal dose of um, arsenic trioxide, is 14 milligrams per kilogram. So, that orally for a rat. But you can pretty much say that it's going to be around about the same for a human. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. I'm going to throw it back in here so that it continues the cycle. It'll go back through. There we go. So. Oh, covered in arsenic. So. I'll wash my hands in a second. Let's do some calculations. Right, here we go. So, let's say 14 milligrams. Okay, let's say it's, it's, it's 0. Point. Was it 14? Yeah, it was 14 milligrams. So, 14 milligrams times, let's say, 25 average man weight equals. There you go. So, it's. About one gram is needed. So, because there's a thousand milligrams in a gram, so one gram of arsenic will kill a man. And uh, as you can see down there, there must have been close onto a ton, I reckon. This is interesting though. Look at this. Look at this beautiful colour in this firebox. Can you see that? It's a sort of yellowy green colour. <clears throat> I'm not entirely sure what that is. It could be some sulphur. It looks like it's coming out of the wall because I've seen it gone and it comes back again. Um, I think that's Paris green which is arsenic trioxide with copper minerals. It would, you know, it would kind of fit that there were copper minerals down here because this is a tin and copper mine. So I would like to think that that is um, Paris green, which makes wonderful blue colors as it burns in fireworks. Um, it's also used in a few other things. It's not quite as deadly as the white stuff. Um, I think this is about 24, I think it's about 24 milligrams per kilogram is deadly. Yep. Interesting subject. Just uh, one little thing I'd like to uh, point out about these is that there aren't many left. There aren't many left around the country. And this is in relatively good condition. There's a really good one in good condition. You can see the labyrinth down at um, Batalic. The best preserved one is near Red Ruth. I haven't been to see that one yet. It's on private land though. But this one, it's in a reasonable condition. It just used to have a little pitched, little pitched roof on the top. It goes to, goes to a point in the middle. Um, but <sighs> this area here, as you can see, is, um, is an awesome place to walk the dogs. It's full of rabbits and kids like to come along and ride their, um, their motorbikes and their BMXs and their mountain bikes along here. Um, and uh, one, of the, uh, one of the owners of the houses just over there obviously doesn't like it. 
So he's been caught, well someone's been caught, I'm saying him, um, I don't know which one it is, but one of them has been planting nails in the ground down here and I nearly trod on one. Um, I reported it to the police and it went in the paper. Um, but here's the other thing, because he didn't want it, what he started doing was he started pulling the calcina to pieces and putting rocks on the path, preferably to injure somebody by the, because of the places he was doing it behind bushes and stuff so that they come around on a bike and hit it. Um, if not, worst case scenario is that he didn't want to hurt anybody. But what he was doing was pulling down a piece of industrial heritage and history, which is to stop, just to stop boys and girls from riding their bikes and motorbikes. Now I ask you, what's the biggest crime here? I think I know the answer to that one. So, that's my little tour of uh, the arsenic calciner. Hope you found it interesting. The dogs certainly do. I'm going to go back and wash my hands. <laughs> I certainly won't be licking them. Um, and uh, have a look at the rest of my videos because there's quite a lot of interesting stuff down, down here in Cornwall. Things like uranium mines. And... Those, are beautiful. Those are a beautiful example of... I think these are California stamps. Let's go and have a little look while we're here. A lovely, lovely example. Not many of these left, neither. You quite often see up places like these rocks like this cracked open. Various mineral collectors come up here looking for looking for bits and bobs and this is an ideal place look somebody's been pulling all of this out it's been just been left here but you can see the mineralization in some of the rocks it's phenomenal I mean look at this that's oh that's actually a piece of there's a piece of rock oh, that's actually a piece of iron another lump there looks like rock if it is, it's heavy in iron ore. Iron ore wasn't really of any interest around here. I think this place has been raided by a mineral collector. But yeah, these were the stamps. There's lots of videos and you can see them. You can see them online. Go look on the Pathé channel and you can see some. They're rotting away. They've been here a while. <laughs> a long, long time actually. They'll stand for another, another age. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.